feel myself growing weaker, as, as though I were in the presence of a large chunk of palladium. But wait, wait a second. That's not palladium. That's my co-host Omar Najam. <laughs> oh, I get that all the time. And that's my co-host Sarah Kaplan. How's it going? It's going great, Omar. Any hour in which I get to talk about Riverdale season six with my buds, can it get oh. better? It is absolutely the best. It's absolutely the best. Uh, and we've got some additional buds. We have a guest this week, don't we? We do. We have a very special guest this week. You'll recognize him from, oh my God, just so many places now. He's all over the place. Uh, dropout, UCB, mm -hmm. voice acting and cartoons, just just doing everything. Welcome, Giovanni. Hi. Hello, hello, hello. It's so good How's to be it here. Going? It's so good to be here. I am mad you made me watch this episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm happy to be here with friends. <laughs> Giovanni, um, on that note, have you ever seen Riverdale before? I've never seen an episode of Riverdale before, and I'm vaguely aware that there is a thing of Archie comics. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, good start. Great. So you're coming in with a lot of context. I'm coming in with no context, and I have come out knowing I don't want to return. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, uh, well, uh, you know what I do want to return to? What's that? I want to return to our, 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 our beautiful, our, our intrepid, our mm -hmm. extremely, our extremely functional, yes, producer. <laughs> What a great Azrael. compliment. <laughs> and by functional, uh, I mean that in opposition to me, who is uh, mostly dysfunctional. I am nothing if not functional. Got all the oil, <laughs> got all my joints greased. Uh, That's right. Oh, oh listeners, listeners, I know we're on episode eight. Uh, you haven't been able to tell because there's no visual component of this podcast, but Azzy mm -hmm. is a robot. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Straight up robot. Not an android. It no. gets mixed up quite often. Yeah. Uh, I'm so excited to be here and talk about a, a w one of the episodes of Riverdale I've seen. Wow, this mm -hmm. one was a doozy. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And Giovanni, no, uh, mm -hmm. as, he's, as he's in your boat, as he, as he has seen every episode of this season, but has not seen the previous seasons of Riverdale. Mm -hmm. And if you have any questions about Riverdale lore, about mm -hmm. actors, or about anything mm -hmm. whatsoever that you're too lazy to Google, this show does consist of one segment that runs the entire length of the episode called Ask Azzy. So please feel free to throw mm -hmm. any questions its, its way. I will get them back as fast as possible. Thank you so much. If I think of something, I will certainly ask. But in this moment, I don't want any more information. <laughs> oh, well, then you're on the right podcast. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, good. Okay. Yes. I was, I, I've been coming in hot. I really I don't know what the vibe of the pod is, but I really I was like, there's just no other way. <laughs> It's, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's nurturing, it's open, it's um fastidious, I might yeah. say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's, it's gonna be yeah. it's gonna be okay that I'm that I'm gonna be like full salty. Johnny, oh, yes. we try I, to embrace we, the spirit yeah. of the Riverdale season six writers room and uh lead with the philosophy <laughs> of all ideas are the best ideas. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, great. Okay, here we I'll go. I'll tell then. you what, folks. Why don't we get together, look at a new town sign, maybe have <laughs> some tea, some sleepy time tea, and uh -huh. uh, yell at each other to meet us in the parking lot for a fight and hop <laughs> into this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Um, um, yeah. Jug heads back to writing. He can write again. That's exciting. What do you think, Giovanni? Yeah. Oh, yeah. R reading minds and writing minds. <laughs> um, what do I think of Jughead being writing again? I love it. I love mm -hmm. that for Jughead. Yeah. That seems so uh, spot on for Jughead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can I ask he, you a question about the free press, Giovanni? Oh, my gosh, please. Do you think it's the responsibility of the press to publish anything that's anonymously submitted to them? And put it on the cover? Yes. Yeah. yeah. It has to be <laughs> yeah. the cover story. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, That's good. important. 
cool. I just like I I I'm sort of loose. I, I I don't have a firm grasp on journalistic ethics, so I did want to check in with you on that. But thank you for clearing it up. Yep, easy. Um, uh, in terms of clearing stuff up, does Tabitha know that Jughead can read minds? Not no no. no. Are Did you he? asking us or are you asking yeah. Giovanni? I don't Which think so. Which one's Tabitha? Which Tabitha, one's Tabitha? Tabitha is Jughead's He's... girlfriend who works at the and owns the diner. Yeah, oh, mom's granddaughter. The, the supermodel in the in yes. the waitress yeah. costume. Yeah, the supermodel yeah. in the waitress yeah. costume. Got it. Oh, okay, okay. I didn't. I did not understand that they were. Uh, they were an item. I was mostly distracted <laughs> really? by somebody that hot. Yeah, <laughs> like, she's yeah. serving coffee. She's so hot. I, I do want to pause here though because it's fascinating. <laughs> Every single guest this season has at some point commented on how Jughead and Tabitha don't seem like a real couple. Yeah. <sighs> I, I can't remember. Yeah, I don't remember feeling any chemistry between them that would lead me to believe that they were a couple. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I had I had no idea. For sure. I think that's accurate. I I think there is no chemistry between them. But I don't mind a supermodel and like another and like a writer. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's not my issue. That's aspirational. Yeah. It for happens. Yeah. Look, look at Arthur Miller and Marilyn Monroe. It exactly. happens. Yeah, it does it happen. And they uh, had chemistry, I'm sure. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure. Um, yeah, in the it's just cuz in the last episode, uh there was a moment where uh Tabitha was thinking, I th I might have left the stove on at Pops. And mm -hmm. Jughead goes, "Tabitha, were you thinking about the stove?" And she nods. And then out on that, uh, Tabitha has no idea why um, Jughead was able to make that guess. Yes. Yeah. He's just really so. intuitive. He's sort of an empath. He is really kind of an empath. You get, you get that <laughs> vibe from, from Jughead, don't you? Yeah, for sure. Um, but there is a blistering critique of Riverdale that has been published in the newspaper. I have a list of things on fandom.com, uh, um, the, uh, the, the Riverdale archiverse of it all. Um, so let me list out some stuff. Tell Which me is this now makes... my homepage. <laughs> you're welcome Izzy. yes we've done it we've done it um we yeah for every time we click it bailey myers gets 25 cents mm -hmm. uh it's uh they're calling the article calls out uh veronica's casino the street gangs like the serpents and ghoulies mm -hmm. the town's long history of ignorance and backwards thinking their overtaxed law enforcement lack of culture and struggling economy is this mm -hmm. enough to make riverdale america's worst town do we all think? I'm going to pop that over to Giovanni. What do you think, Giovanni? Yeah. That list of things? Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's, I think that's a, that seems like a good list. <laughs> I didn't think that was a terrible list. <laughs> yeah. So do people, else, did people find running? that to be a terrible list? Wait, uh, good as in you think it's doing a good job of making Riverdale seem bad? No, they're like, They've got they their law enforcement is not good and they've yeah. got like a homeless uh like houselessness problem. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. These all seem like yeah, this all seems yeah, like, so, that seems so like you an kinda, okay. You kinda think Riverdale is maybe an okay town, actually. Oh no, no. Like that for it that <laughs> think that's a decent case for it to be not a good town. Oh, it's a bad yeah. town. Okay. Yeah. Huh. So, yeah. yeah. So it's a bad it's a good list at being a bad list of things. Yes. I mean it's a good list. It's a good yeah. list of bad things. I feel Got like it. that list yeah. backs up their thesis. <laughs> yes. There we go. Yeah. yeah, okay. it's, a strong, yeah. it's a strongly argued it's case. It's a robust argument. Yeah. <laughs> Do people not think that? If someone said that stuff about your hometown, would you challenge them to fight you in the parking lot outside of the town hall meeting? Well, I love getting punched, so it's, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the person to ask. <laughs> Um, no, but I, is that Archie's deal all the time? I guess that's one question I have. Is he's he just a like a, pu boy. a punchy guy? He's okay. he's like Archie. Archie, like imagine Archie as just the the goodest boy. Yeah, but he does have a lot of town pride, so mm -hmm. he gets in a lot of fights. He is a semi professional boxer, and he was a member of an underground juvenile delinquent fighting ring. Yeah, but he doesn't start a lot of fights. Yeah, he and also his... him and. Mm -hmm. Sorry, go ahead. 
oh, really important that I get this out. His hair, hair color is not believable, right? <laughs> Other people no. feel this. No, that, okay. it, it was in the early seasons, and by now they've uh, just embraced the unnatural redness. Of Slowly, the, yeah. the orange has just creeped brighter and brighter. Okay, okay. just okay. I think that's my only question. Yeah, Please. it was recently <laughs> described as a Dua Lipa esque hair color. Mm. Yes, thank um, you, Mary Anthony. Yeah. So, um, okay. So, uh, uh, you would, um, you know, th- you, you would get into a fist fight over someone insulting your town. Would you say you might have a leg up considering you are literally indestructible? Oh, is he magic? Is he indestructible? Oh yeah. Sorry. He oh, has magic. That's so unfair. He's a, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he's a bully then. Okay. It does seem unfair. Um, but you know that guy Percival Pickens that he was challenging to a fight? Yes. English. This is English. mentioned multiple times. Yep, yep. Yeah. Do you get the sense that he has powers? Yes, because he was talking to Jughead telepathically. Yeah, and he w- mm. and he made people do things. He with he forced them. He took over their brains somehow. That's true. Yeah. So he's mm-hmm. got his own magic. So it doesn't oh, seem yeah. unfair. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, with all of the information, sure. But Archie doesn't know that when he's challenging people to fights. That's true. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's like I think that's fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Archie, all Archie knows is that he's me. indestructible. I'll, I will kill you if you don't stop. Like, he's only had his powers that. for like two episodes in his defense, so he's uh, yeah. he's not taking them into account necessarily. Right? He's... Yeah. So is he, everybody yeah. getting powers like True Blood? Like over the course of the series, mm, everyone thank eventually. You. Interesting. I was waiting for being. somebody to bring up True Blood. Uh, yes. Uh, okay. Well. Really quickly, what sort of happened is um, Veronica Lodge's dad, Hiram Lodge, placed a bomb under Archie and Betty's bed, which blew yeah. up through a series mm-hmm. of uh, coincidences. That bomb happened to create a splinter universe called River Vale, where all things mm-hmm. are possible, <laughs> filled, filled, with, <laughs> filled with magic and, and ghosts and, and curses and the devil. Uh, oh, and- my God. So it's also like that show with the cheerleader. Like heroes, heroes, heroes. Mm. So seasons mm-hmm. one through five of Riverdale, there actually is no magic or anything. Oh, it's a, it's not like a grounded world emotionally, but physically, it's a grounded world. Yeah. Uh, but at the start of season six, we're introduced to the parallel dimension of River Vale, and um, and now people have started getting powers, and we don't know why yet. So is the is the mommy dearest stuff happening in River Vale, or is that strictly everything, just a dreamscape? Everything in this episode is in River Dale. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Do you mean the the dream sequence that um sh- that Abigail uh, Blossom enters into along with Britta because Britta gives them both sleepy time tea so Britta can sneak into Abigail Blossom's dreams in order to free Cheryl and find where she's existing in the ether? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, that's River Dale. Yeah. Uh, okay. Speaking of that, <laughs> speaking of that subplot, um, so we we first open up on a young girl um, going to an old woman with one eye who's sort of locked <laughs> in a barn. How did you feel about that scene? Oh, yeah, <laughs> that was very early on in the episode, and I think uh-huh. out loud I went, "Oh my god!" And I checked how long the episode. Was. <laughs> I had no idea that that's like a place that the show went um, stylistically. If I yes. call it that, uh, yeah, you didn't know. I was, upset. I was upset less than three minutes in. <laughs> so you didn't go into this expecting a bunch of witch shit. No, I had no. I thought it was. I don't know what I thought it was going to be like, but I did. I wasn't expecting like camp. Mm-hmm. Sure. Oh, okay. Um, but if the you camp- had to, yeah. Go ahead, sorry. Please. No, please. no, please, please. I don't know what I was going to say. Who, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> if you had to guess, why did Nana Blossom bring about the spirit of Abigail Blossom to put into Cheryl Blossom's body? Um, <laughs> sorry, it's a, this is a lot of character names that I don't have <laughs> a connection for. Um, is the uh, is the eye lady? Is that one of the blossoms? Okay, the that, one that's yeah. one rose. That's Nana that's, Rose. That's oh, that's Cheryl's, Nana Rose. That's Cheryl's grandma. Mm-hmm. Cheryl. Okay. Cheryl Cheryl's locked is away. The one mm-hmm. locked away in the dreamscape, being so tortured why, the by question her mom. Is why did somebody? Oh, so why the context. Is she away? Yeah. Here's yeah. the context you don't have. Okay. In the previous episode, uh, or the one before? No, the previous episode. 
Nana Blossom transfers the soul of the 140-year-old witch, Abigail Blossom, into okay. her That's granddaughter's two body. Ago. Sorry, two Into her granddaughter's ago. body. She chose mm-hmm. to do that. Yeah, uh-huh. she chose to do that. Her granddaughter's body. Knowing it would kill her granddaughter. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. But she's yeah. not... She doesn't feel like she's being portrayed as like an evil character. Unless that's like a secret thing. It's known mm. that she's a tricksy old lady that you shouldn't okay. trust. She's yeah. a tricksy old lady. Yeah. So the question is, why would she do that? Yeah. Yeah. I guess because like her granddaughter is like a a bad bitch and she's threatened by her power <laughs> in some way. Interesting. So she stands okay. in front of a fireplace with a lot of with a lot of gusto, a lot of, a lot of yeah. gumption, mm-hmm. and maybe maybe a maybe a, a moxie. A, yeah, so much moxie, and I just mm-hmm. maybe. Maybe a tricksy old witch didn't like that kind of power too close by. Yeah. Okay. You know, I, I don't think that's explicitly the reason, but I do think that is part of the reason. Yeah. I think you're right about that. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. She sort of just wants this witch to get vengeance on the town of Riverdale. Yeah. But, and she was kind of complaining that a lot of the ladies of Riverdale are like a lot. Oh, oh yeah, the, at, at large. That's a reason to kill your granddaughter. <laughs> yeah, they all dress <laughs> like these ladies yeah, are too yeah. much. They, they, they all dress that like way, it does feel a little hypocritical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Savage. Yeah. Um. All right. Yeah. Okay. So that's why yeah. that's happening. Yeah. Yeah. But so Britta's on the case. Yeah. But Britannia's going to do it. Um. And so we're able to return comfortably back to the town hall segment of this show. Hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> uh, yeah. Giovanni. Yeah. How do you feel about the town hall of it all? I don't even have any specific mm. questions for this one. Uh, I mean, the t- uh, I mean, just from like a just a viewership point of view, the town hall scenes were all very forgettable. I don't know. I felt just I they were boring. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. They, weren't, they weren't interesting scenes. I didn't. I like took little like snapshots just so I would remember like what I wanted to talk about in this right. podcast, and the, I didn't take any pictures of those because they, they were just blips. Oh, you yeah. have pictures mm-hmm. you want to talk about? Oh, or do you yeah. mean mental mental snapshots? You took mental Let's, snapshots? No, no, literal literal snapshots. Oh, you literally oh. took like oh, yeah. okay, that's awesome. Yeah. No, no. Well, I Let's, do want to hear what those are. I do want to one note on. I want to hear one note. I want to drop one note here on Percival Pickens at the town hall meeting. Mm-hmm. Yes. I used to work for Nithya Raman's office. She's a city sure. council woman here in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. And I had to watch a lot of LA city council meetings and listen mm-hmm. to a lot of um, like open public commentary segments. Mm-hmm. And everything Percival Pickens says about the houseless people of Riverdale. Yeah. I feel like word for, for word was ripped off of transcripts of LA city council open forum. <laughs> That hurts so and much. Honestly, he's more restrained with his language than a lot of people are in real life. That's amazing. That that makes a lot of sense to me. That it's and it's very sad, honestly. It's very it's sad. A bummer. Yeah. Um, but less of a bummer. I'm really excited you took some snapshots of this episode yeah. you hated. Do you want uh, to paint us a word picture out of the uh, pictures you took? Okay. Uh one eye lady. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, good. Um mommy dinner but mommy dearest dinner. Uh-huh. Yes. Yes. Um just the, the I uh, I took a picture of just like the that the bad bitch girl like coming home. I don't know what was happening. Sure, yeah. She was just, it was just weird. It's just weird. <laughs> oh, I took yeah. a picture. I took a picture of um all of the unhoused people and their saviors being white. Sure. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I was like that's a yeah. lot. That's Bit a of lot social of commentary people. there. <laughs> um, <laughs> it is upstate New York, but I agree with you. It's a lot I, of white people in this town. Mm-hmm. I took a picture of Intense Eyebrows Casino owner. Okay, uh-huh. okay, Veronica could be Veronica. Oh, because I was because I was thinking, well, I thought it was so weird. When she was like, "We're gonna put up a picture of my father <laughs> to remind us every day who we're not gonna be like." Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Did you get a sense subtextually from that? That um, I don't know. Did you get any sense that Veronica might have ordered a hit on her dad? <laughs> Oh, no, I didn't. 
No. I didn't. And, it, and no. if she did, how do you think he would have been killed? Yeah. Um, That's like an elegant way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, I, uh, I guess because I'm on like a love, love lies bleeding moment. Then oh, okay. Like, you know, in some way that he, that he like killed off his enemies, like she would like do away with him in some similar fashion. Sure. So Ooh. maybe, probably not like zip tie his hands behind his back, shoot him in the head four times and burn his body. And then put him in a shallow grave. Shot him four times in the head, <laughs> and then yeah. him on fire. Well, she and didn't do it. Fire. She didn't do it. She Anna told. Fire, yeah. Anna told the Russian hitman did. Yeah, it's not. It's not very. It's not very poetic. <laughs> <laughs> Anna told's not a poetic man. <laughs> and then I took one. I took one picture of a field profile where it looks like the guy is like <laughs> in extras holding on a western, and I was like, uh, extras mm-hmm. holding, no sir. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. But yeah, that, no. but I had finished the episode by then. Or um, it may, the episode may have been on, but anyway, that's the last one. Who knows? Right. Yeah, we're on field. Episode might be going on. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, Giovanni, I just wanted to say that it's refreshing to have somebody on the podcast bring some real hater energy <laughs> towards the show. There's no way I'm the first one. There's no way. That was ridiculous. That was utterly mm-hmm. ridiculous. Mm-hmm. <laughs> The a- um, the acting, yeah. the choices, the way that 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 episode was wild. I don't know how I don't know how it is with the other ones in the season or the oh. series, but I was like, what the fuck? No, this is pretty <laughs> consistent with the rest of the season. Um, pausing, pausing for a second. I have to yes. cough. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. You're welcome back. <laughs> um, if I may, I, you know, to maybe maybe pose a counter argument, um, I think that there that are... That it's good? Well, <laughs> well, I will say at the very least yeah. that it's grounded. There are three plot lines that I think I'm sorry, do... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm not good at, I'm not good at fair um, debate. You're about to say <laughs> yeah. that what I just watched was mm-hmm. grounded? I just want to be clear before you start examples. your list. Three examples <laughs> of <laughs> grounded of storylines. I three, am, yeah. I'm shook already <laughs> at okay. what you're about to attempt, but please. And and you know, maybe there'll be some slices of humble pie served up as I give you this list. I mean, one we've got um um folks arguing about how to deal with the unhoused crisis. Okay. Yeah. Um with Pickens, um, you know, accusing Archie of being too idealistic and that his um, save the town approach is silly. We've got number two, okay, right? That one's which real. is You're right. uh, a, a, a casino having to figure out a way to become legitimate and how can they become an economic boost for the town of Riverdale uh, and possibly save Riverdale from itself, okay? Um, and then you've got three, um, Britta um, constantly putting sleepy time tea in <laughs> Abigail's tea so that she can sneak into her dreams and find the remnants of Cheryl Blossom's soul <laughs> as to bring her back. I okay. think that these are things that we all <laughs> deal with no, on a regular I think, basis. I think the idea of a casino trying to go legit is just not realistic. The, th- <laughs> the, thir- the, third, one, the third one is fine. <laughs> I agree with you there. That one's fine. Um, the idea that like, a business is hard to be mm-hmm. a business. It's like, that's so trite. Like, whatever. Yeah. And they tried for like five minutes. Like, yeah. fuck off. <laughs> yeah, they tried for five minutes. Um, oh, one or one and three, legit. Thank you. I, I, I do well, I'm sorry. That. I cheapen, I cheapen, I cheapen the, my actual belief in the first one by saying that three is real, but, but it's, it's part, <laughs> parse out what's joking real. <laughs> There is there yes. is a, a grounded story in a town trying to figure out what to do with its uh, unhoused population and how we yes. yeah. treat our neighbors. Yes. Um, I am disappointed in Riverdale, the show, for leaning so hard in these tiny house, micro houses. Mm-hmm. Just because I used to live next to one of these uh, micro house little neighborhoods in mm-hmm. Oakland. And uh, it was in, a, in practice... It was really bad. It was a lot of money funneled to like developer friends of of the city officials and a lot of really, really harsh restrictions put on the people trying to live in those homes to the point mm-hmm. where they were like not even functional. Mm-hmm. But mm. that said, I applaud Archie trying to find a solution. He's yeah. a perfect boy. He's trying. 
he's trying. I mean, there is also the obvious option B for what to do with the uh, uh, unhoused people in your city, which is like use magic powers to tell them all to just fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and it is possible. Like, I don't think that's the right solution. Mm hmm. But some people, I guess, do. Yeah, it's on the table in Riverdale. Yeah. How do we feel about Riverdale, the new Atlantic City? Mm. I think I don't know enough about Atlantic City to know what yeah. they're saying. I barely As know whether West that's Coast a real person, place. I was like, <laughs> what? Okay, <laughs> it might be only like East Coast representative, and that says something because I'm in Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as you, you're not an East Coast representative. <laughs> no, no, but I'm the most East. Um, yeah, to me, Atlanta you have City a New York gambling. accent. Like that's yeah. This is okay. a mile a minute for us, Azzy. Um, Atlantic City is very famous for gambling. You might remember the episode of The Office where they try to go to Atlantic City. Yep. Um, I've never seen The Office. Another show that it's, Sarah has not seen. It's like a bachelor uh, par- party city as well. Yeah, right? yeah, that's a good way. Yeah, to it's put a it. shitty Las Vegas that Donald Trump owned a casino in. That's all I know. Um, but it's also supposed to be family friendly. Yeah. Well, Veronica says that she'll put in a daycare and an yes. arcade. I, I also think it's important that they mention the real place, mm-hmm. Atlantic City. Mm-hmm. And in the same episode, uh-huh. <laughs> say Marsha's Vineyard rather than Martha's Vineyard. Yes. That is the same episode. Why are we just saying things? Why are we, <laughs> what are we doing here? Why is one thing the name and the one yeah. thing isn't the name? It's so weird. Uh, Chicago also also, gets a shout out. Yeah. For it to be the new Atlantic City, I like, I think I understood that Atlantic City was gambling, but then I got confused because it was like supposed to be family friendly, which I didn't Mm -hmm. associate with Atlantic City. Also, like, like Vegas or Atlantic City, there would be many casinos. So, like, what is she saying that they're going to have more casinos or that that one casino is going to make it Atlantic City? Like, that seems weird. I don't think she Mm. had a good plan. Honestly. Yeah, and so it's just like, oh, yeah. it's going to be impossible to run a business on the level when I'm already not good at business. <laughs> well, okay. Yeah. yeah, running a business might be hard for her, but I do need you to know about Veronica Lodge that when she was in her early 20s, she was a highly successful investment banker who went by the <laughs> nickname the She-Wolf of Wall Street. Don't believe it. It's true. <laughs> That's canon. <laughs> Uh, and what if I said that uh, just a few episodes earlier, uh, she out bargained the actual real devil? Mm-hmm. She didn't out bargain him. <laughs> she found a way to. She found a way to, okay. s- to stay a part of his system. You know, like okay, yeah. She found a way to offer him thousands of souls in exchange for her soul. <laughs> yeah, a constant oh feed. That's she wolf energy. The devil is a character. Yeah, well, okay. I wish, yeah. The I devil is a character. Said, I wish you would have. Oh, Mm -hmm. oh, in Rivervale. Okay. I wish that when you asked me to do this podcast Uh and I, and I said, what do I have, what do I have to do? And you say, okay, hang on, I'm starting this over and I hope you can like edit it cleanly. Mm -hmm. I wish that when you asked me to do this podcast, they would have said, Giovanni, will you do a Riverdale podcast? You just have to watch one episode and Mm -hmm. know that. River Vale mm-hmm. has the devil in it. Yes. <laughs> I would have said, oh, I think I'm so busy. <laughs> uh, that's so fair, the dev- Giovanni. The devil, the devil lives in River Vale and Veronica didn't outsmart him. She, she worked with what? <laughs> <laughs> would you like a first name or a last name? Of the devil? Yeah. Last yeah. name. <laughs> last name okay, and then we're going to give you the last name. If you would like to guess the first name, you can win up to 10 points. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> this is kind of a little Veronica Lodge casino gambling game in a way. Mm-hmm. Okay, last name. Last name this is... This will cost $100. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Last name, Cypher. Mr. Cypher. What do you think the first name is? D? D Cypher would have oh, been good. that's good. good. I love that. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. We'll stick with that. Yeah. Um, yeah, but that's in Rivervale. Things are weird yeah. in Rivervale. You know? 
<laughs> people don't worry about it. People make deals with the devil. People become La Llorona. Archie yeah. has the still beating heart cut out of his chest to appease the Maple Maiden. Oh my yeah, god. Don't worry about it. Oh also, his first name is Lou, just so you know. It's Lou. Lou. It's very <laughs> clever. If his name was D. Don Cypher, you get D. Cypher and his name can still be Devil. That's true. <laughs> That's so true. Lou. <laughs> yeah. First were, idea, best idea. They went with the Lucifer <laughs> angle. Oh, Lou, Lou Cipher. I get yeah. it. Oh, yeah. Lou Cipher. I know. So I, I think D is great because if because if people be like, "What does the D stand for, Mister Cipher?" and you devil, devil, yeah. devil Cipher, yeah, oh, devil Cipher. I think it's, I think it's devil. If you make him devil Lewis. <laughs> Devil Cypher. Lewis Cipher. I love that. You get both. You get both. And I think like if you lean all the way in, as uh-huh. I to me, to me it's 70%, which just makes me mad. But if you're like, no, we know this is stupid. His name is Devil. Cipher. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm in. I'm in and I'll watch more episodes. If you know. In I'll the defense watch. of the show. They lean all the way into the stupid. When he offers people soul contracts, it's a big piece of paper with giant 666 written on top that says soul contract. Oh, yeah. God. And then when he asks Kevin if he wants to sign it, Kevin goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes, okay, but you want to read it first? And he goes, no, I don't care about it. And signs it. Um, uh, there, I would like to read this one sentence from fandom. Um, please. Uh, mm. As his new homepage. Yeah. After the meeting, Archie asks Percival to stay behind to chat and notices that Percival is English. <laughs> Wait, what are you reading? What is this? This is just, just awesome. a synopsis page just a on summary. Fandom. Just a little summary. So cool. It realizes that Percival is English, and then it gets brought up a bunch of times. <laughs> like a so lot. Awesome. Even in the last episode, it's brought up. <laughs> yeah. It's relevant. It's relevant. Yeah, yeah, he's English. It's important. It would also be funny if like somebody in the writer's room was just like, I don't know why we're friends with English people like after mm-hmm. what they did to us. <laughs> and I was like, why are we just besties with them? People need to remember. What did they need? They put so us through. funny. Wait, what did That's they put so us through? True. That's oh what I'm talking This is exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> this, is a, this is erasure. This is historical erasure, Sarah. They you know. Tried, they tried to keep us colonies oh my they tried God. to tax tea our in the tea. harbor that's true all those british colonists back in the 1600s who came over mm-hmm. that and dude, like i bet the, some of I, them were i bet some of them were making deals with the devil to attain immense warlock <laughs> powers and then tricking the devil so that they could live forever and then sneaking their way through the borders yeah. between pocket yeah. dimensions hamilton mm-hmm. didn't do enough <laughs> no I'm going to get my hands no. on these Riverdale scripts. <laughs> Try to remind people what we those need them dirty to know. Brits did to us. We need them to know. I listened to an audiobook about how the Revolutionary War was fought because um, England was like, we don't want to finance a war with indigenous yeah. tribes, so you can't go past Kentucky. And the landowners, a.k.a. George Washington, etc., said, no, but we need to like sell that land. We need more land. So they broke away from England so that they could go to war and continue manifest destiny Mm -hmm. Uh, i think there are a lot of corrupt reasons i also think a lot of the founding fathers from what i've heard were um like major heads of like an illegal tea trade and (laughs) okay yeah that makes sense the tea tax the tea tax fucked up their business not because of like taxation without representation but because it started meaning people were tracking all the tea that they were like yeah shipping everywhere i believe it did we grow it. a bunch of tea? Were they were they getting tea? And this is not Riverdale, I understand, but were we receiving tea and we were upset about that, or we were selling tea? Imagine that, we that grew imagine here? no no, we're importing it, but imagine that you have like total control over the supply of caffeine. Yeah. Oh damn, that's sick. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I don't want anyone controlling my control over the caffeine. What would y'all sell your souls for? Oh, that's a great mm. question. We've got that part of the sleepover. Yeah. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Ladies. Um, okay. Am I in Rivervale or in this world? Hmm. Let's take mm, your, your Sarah answer first. Yeah. And then, this world. Sarah, and then Sarah Cypher. Riverdale. And then Sarah okay. Cypher. Yeah. 
Um, in this world, I mean, mm-hmm. if I had the ability to transform into anything I wanted, mm-hmm. that would be and way wow. worth it. Cool. And then, like, is selling your soul just like after this lifetime you go to hell, or are you like in servitude oh, well, of the so devil that's now? Why, that's why mm. I wanted to clarify because in this world, I don't believe in a devil or hell, so or souls. So I'm not like worried mm-hmm. about selling it. But yeah. in Rivervale, when I know it's canon that I would spend eternity going ouch, ouch, owie, ow in the fiery uh-huh. pits mm-hmm. of hell, then mm-hmm. I then there's probably nothing that's worth it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Also, I have no, mm-hmm. I have no intention of answering. I just pose questions. I, yeah, I you love you taking the role of mo- moderator of this podcast. There are <laughs> I'm no, just, I'm there just are, talking. There's I'm no talking. rules. There's no rules. I'm there's talking. no rules. So you would have, so Sarah, you would transform into anything. Like you'd have the yeah. power to transform into anything. Yeah. Um, I would say equitable distribution of resources. That's crazy. That's an insane thing to wish oh, for. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Like world peace. Yeah, That's I nice. think it would lead to world peace. It's like a very it tangible, would. Yeah. tangible approach to world peace. I like that. Is it, yeah, this is like a so much more pro- progressive version of Aladdin <laughs> that that Omar is in. Mm-hmm. Thank you. He yeah. just like wishes everyone out of poverty in all of Agrabah. <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah, out of Agrabah. That or there was a restaurant in downtown San Jose just... that used to have a dessert that was a hockey puck because <laughs> go sharks. That was like a little chocolate hockey puck cake and I really miss it. I don't know if the restaurant's gone or even if the dessert's still around, but I think if I couldn't solve poverty, I'd really like that <laughs> hockey puck dessert today. Puck, oh my gosh. Okay, yeah. I don't know how long, I don't know how long we've been recording, but this, at this time, <laughs> Stamp is when I became glad I was here. <laughs> uh, Ashley, what would you sell That's yourself so funny. for? <laughs> no, no, no. I was thinking something more like Omar's first answer of like making sure that like people are set up well, but that's boring and that's not. Mm-hmm. Y'all are making um, me look beautiful really though. Bad. It, legitimately, uh, it is beautiful. Teacher <laughs> Azzy, I want to re edit my answer. Can you say, no. I would sell my soul for a world peace? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Y'all think um, that, um, as folks who go to conventions and stuff, that we should start calling Artist Alley Sketch Alley? Yeah, just, just a pondering question. Um, yeah, I do. Yeah, that's what I'd sell my soul for, just to rename. Uh, <laughs> no, I think I would want like I think I'd want like all my pets to live forever. If my uh, oh, if that's like my yeah, good answer. if that's my selfish yeah. answer, good answer. That's a great because answer. I want to watch the story that takes place six thousand years from now, but your pets are still around. Yeah, no, they're they're chilling. <laughs> they're like cockroaches. <laughs> They've survived everything. Yes. <laughs> They've like We've become little un- little Django gods. just really crushing it out there. If I can pivot since I'm the moderator. Please, yes. Yes. please. Yes. Um, and thank you again watched... for having us on the show. <laughs> thank you for being here, everybody. I wanted to take a moment to talk about the movie Hercules. <laughs> yes, I love the movie please. Hercules. Yeah. Yes. I was like, I just, Which one? I, the animated Hercules the from yeah. the 90s. I, I figured. Mm-hmm. I woke up at 1.30 in the morning and had to watch it. Mm-hmm. Um okay. And I watched it and it's weird. Like I watched it as a child and I watched it in my twenties and my thirties. And I felt differently about the Meg storyline every time. Sure. How do you feel about it these days? Okay. So as a kid, I felt, I don't, I didn't resonate with her at all. She did nothing for me. I think she was like too powerful, too sexy. I didn't, I didn't um, relate to her Mm -hmm, and she mm -hmm. sold her soul to Hades, which I just like could, I was so Christian. I couldn't have, I didn't understand that (laughs) either. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. In my twenties, I was like, oh, why would you like give up any, like, why would you give up your soul or like your, 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 uh, divinity, like from Hercules's point of view for like a romance of a person you just met that doesn't make any fucking sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you just met, you know, the whole like Disney, you just met type shit. Yeah. And then watching it at one thirty the other night, I was like, if you meet somebody special, like, mm-hmm. hold on, hold on to that. Oh, yeah. Oh, Do whatever. Do whatever yeah. you have to do. Do whatever you have to do to like, if you really feel like this is real love, you don't know that you're going to find it again. And you just got to do what you got to do. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Yeah, I I love that. I, I'm a huge Meg fan. Oh yeah? I, yeah, I, lo- I love, love Meg. that Jason Statham pick. I... <laughs> Is Jason Statham as Meg? No, no. I'm a Meg? Meg, Meg reference. 
Meg, I I think of all the Disney women, is the one mm-hmm. that like the Disney princesses to me weren't like I I never had any like dysphoric jealousy around them because they mm-hmm. didn't they felt like I don't know fake people. Meg was mm-hmm. the one where I was like, mm-hmm. ooh, I wish I could be this poor broken extremely skinny greek woman mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. 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 and it all yeah. ties to, it all ties together because of selling your soul to the devil yeah it's yes. right. and mag in rivervale is mm-hmm. um something Ch- jughead yeah <laughs> yeah just yeah. A, it's just yeah, kind, Jughead's of kind of the mag. Yeah, I always wish that I had, um, this is a very insane thing I'm about to say, and uh-huh. I'll probably get carted away by, by Betty, sure. FBI agent Betty. <laughs> Got it. Uh, but like, I remember for a long time being like, I wish I had, I wish I had Ariel's core. Uh, oh yeah, totally. <laughs> she just has like a really like good like torso. Her and then abs? I was like, yeah, yeah, her abs. Oh, okay. yeah. And then I was like, oh, it's because she is a mermaid. And I worked this out like out loud in high school in the cafeteria. Yeah, it's always freaking. <laughs> and this is before kicking. a lot of queer representation or like neurodivergent like discourse. Yeah. So I just kind of was sitting with my buds, uh, a <laughs> bunch of metrosexuals, and I was yeah. just like, man, I really wish I had Ariel's abs. Oh, it's because she's a fish, huh? That's why she's got such a good core. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And just a golden gleaming moment in my life. Okay. You, awesome. went to the, you went to the gym and did 20 reps of flipper flipper fins. Yeah. Unfortunately, we still had the tank. <laughs> we yeah. still had the, the yeah. basketball gym tank. <laughs> Can I ask y'all a, a Disney question? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, because I've gotten wildly divergent answers to this. Oh, okay. Do you think Nala is the hottest Disney princess? That's <gasps> this again. wild. Oh. That's wild because there is a shot in Lion King which is uncomfortable. It's the awkward. bedroom eyes. The bedroom it's, eyes that she gives Simba. It's odd. Do you ever like <laughs> you ever like you ever been with a girl who thinks it's like cute that she's never been with a girl before? <laughs> No, I have. Like, Welcome she looks, to my life. And she looks Sorry. at you. <laughs> she looks at you like, like, oh, this is gonna be so cute. Like I'm mm-hmm. so fresh. But like, all uh-huh. you're really mm-hmm. getting is like, you're not gonna do anything. Yeah, you're not gonna be good. <laughs> this I'm gonna is have okay. to do. I'm gonna have to do everything. Can Ugh. I feel the love tonight? I can barely feel anything. Right. <laughs> That's so funny. You and I have to kick it um, off off mic because I the amount of rants that I've gone on and people have told me I'm gatekeeping in the queer community. Um, Wait, is, I have to uh, know what these rants are, Omar. Well, it's this kind of thing where it's just like it's are you going to get us canceled where, right now? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I, there's a really high risk. I don't care. So there's yeah, a we very can cut high risk. I I like to present myself as someone who's very open minded and is just like all are welcome, welcome to the family, chosen family, happy June, happy Pride. But in reality, I am the biggest stringent gatekeeping um, mm-hmm. queer on the planet. I have a questionnaire people have to fill out. Mm-hmm. I need to know. I draw hard lines in the sand and I make big opinions. Um, we love to no. think we're open minded, but we all have our boxes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I want to know, uh, Omar's. What are you? Who are you excluding? <laughs> it's, okay, no, it's just am I wrong? Am I wrong? Like, when you were just like, ladies. this is the like, uh, uh, you know, you were saying like, you know, when folks are just like, isn't it crazy that I haven't done this? Um, that I'm like, well, no, I'm in my mid thirties and I'm queer. It's not that. Cra- it's not crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like can we can we like okay can we do something and then skip to like the netflix watching and talk about who we like on the circle that's kind of a queer experience for me whereas folks getting very excited about this stuff i'm just like i'm I'm old and i'm past it so the null mm-hmm. eyes i think is the thing where i'm just like okay yeah okay great that's very good that's very very good that's for me personally i'm not here to draw any labels on anyone does that make sense Wait, i need clarification this- here omar yeah, okay, that was great. very vague Okay, great. I'll say this. Uh, I, I, I know some folks who. Okay, well, you know, a couple weeks ago, Dan Lippert to drag someone else into this to bring yeah, this yeah. off a little bit off of me. Every uh-huh. time Sarah has asked icon, you to repeat um, in more detail, my dread has grown further and further. <laughs> the folks who like commodify um, 
uh, uh, commodify like queer identity a little bit. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, uh, it was, so when it's like, isn't it crazy that I'm attracted to people of like my same sex? I'm like, no, (laughs) no, it's Uh, it's not. It's very normal. It's very normal. And we've kind of been talking about for a while now. And uh, Here's what it is. The, the folks who kind of Katy Perry their way through it, who are just like, Mm. I kissed a girl and I liked it. I'm like, yeah, that, yes, that makes absolute sense. This isn't. Okay, that's my kind of reaction where I'm like, I have to now, I would like to go hang out with a lot of my lesbian friends who would find this a little boring, if I'm being honest. I don't, and my, I, yeah, you go to your body. I don't have, I don't have a problem with people exploring their queerness or mm-hmm, mm-hmm. entering my sphere, my community for the first time. I just don't want them to think that it's sexy to me. Yes. yes. I welcome yes. you. It doesn't turn me on that you've never done this before. Thank you for your saying the thing eyes. I've been trying to say for 17 minutes. It is the <laughs> Nala eyes. And it's the Nala eye contact where they're like, isn't this wild? And you're just like, oh, I'm a person. No. It's from specific, the, are you it's asking specifically, yes or no? It's specifically the Nala eyes paired with the paws that are not active. <laughs> They're like <laughs> spread. They're like splayed too wide. Yeah, it's just like here I am. And my <laughs> answer to the question is probably not. I think it's Pocahontas, probably. Oh, that's very good. That's an insane answer to the question, Azzy. Wait, what was it? Wait, what about Pocahontas? What was the question? I've the lost hottest that. Disney Thank you. princess. The question was, is is not the hottest Disney princess? <laughs> I've never heard that even posed. Really? Uh, ugh. Yeah, I find she- some people are disgusted by the idea of considering Nala hot, and then I find other people who immediately are like, yeah, of course Nala's the hottest Disney princess. I have no problem like considering animal characters hot. That is like not my problem at all. It's just like, Nala? It's just that so Nala... I agree with <laughs> just Nala's I don't find Nala hot. position it's on tigers. She's a lion. <laughs> Nala specifically you look at, and you're like, damn, this bitch just looks like someone having her first time with a girl. <laughs> 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 that's the new merch i think that as long as we don't get sued that is <laughs> going to be the tank tops that the disneyland be, tank tops that would be out of all our propositions so far the one we would get sued the fastest <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. be no, no, speed speaking run. of betty eight minutes yeah. ago is yeah. betty the one who is who that's too bright for you want to talk about Riverdale, Giovanni, <laughs> on the Riverdale season six I'm podcast? I'm trying to be a good moderator. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They, that is Betty. That is Betty. That. She, yeah. Betty has aura powers and oh I'm giving her migraines. <laughs> yeah. And she has aura powers in Riverdale. Yes. Mm-hmm. But okay. because, because magic is bleeding through the boundary between Rivervale and Riverdale. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Because yeah. because Percival Pickens is an immortal racist warlock who made a deal with the devil in the 1600s. I'm sorry that I brought it back to Riverdale because now I'm <laughs> mad I'm here again. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, to, I, I, I want to ask you another Riverdale question. No, before we get to that, Azzy, I want, I want to keep going with this queer talk. Okay. Yeah, um, no, yeah, yeah. let's keep going through this. I'm, I'm actually, just going to set the podcast aside. <laughs> yeah. This is the podcast. Yeah. Uh, this is the podcast now. <laughs> um. Okay, I actually find that topic really interesting, Omar. Yeah. Because I... I'm just going to lean back in my chair. Yeah, I can't relate specifically to that experience because I feel like any time that I'm, like, hooking up with someone, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they're either also trans. Yes. Or... Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, I guess I exist in such a gendered boundary space that, like, I'm going to be someone's first time with a trans person in general, and they just have no idea how to interact with me. Yes. But I can yeah. relate to that where I'm like, I wish you would just be normal. Yeah. Yeah. Y- yeah. I, yeah, that is, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I think that's, uh, beautiful on a very, very good point. I'm def, yeah, I definitely coming at, I'm trying so hard not to just like call out specific, <laughs> <and> <laughs> my specifics would be so specific in a public forum. Um, but like, th- I just had a few experiences where I think femme presi- why am I even going this far into this? Don't go this far. I'm going to stop you. Okay, okay I'll great. jump in. Yeah. I can jump in. Okay. Yeah. On like, just, just if I can like metaphorically, uh, like do, do something with like the experience that you're talking about, Sarah. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah please. 
and like and I experienced this in in different sure. sex um sectus uh like getting like going to like a really cool event like a mm-hmm. very a very cool like maybe like maybe there's like maybe it's glitzy maybe it's just like very fucking cool and it's yeah. like it's okay if you've never been here before or been to something that's cool before but you have to act like you have <laughs> just like act like you have and it'll just be better it'll just be better for you and for everybody if you're not like blah, blah, blah. i don't know yeah Do you know that's what I'm a saying? fun general rule yeah i just I, like, you act, know, like also, act like you've I, been here before I will also say I do think the Katy Perryness of it all too is a thing where I'm just like uh, it feels a li- like I think I pick up on a disingenuous. I, I I'm a little um, jughead in that way sometimes. I'm a little bit of an empath where I can like read thoughts and like body language <laughs> and stuff. And uh-huh. I, I think at times I'm just like, oh, I can see that you are like using this as like a commodified identity. That you're like, I think this will be my brand. I think that this, and I'm just like, uh, mm. oh okay and it makes me like a little uncomfortable uh especially in like digital spaces where people like this i'm just like okay great well i know like a lot of queer creators so do you want me to introduce you oh you don't want to meet them that's very interesting okay that's great uh but it is i think the nala eye contact i think it is different because we're talking about the specific experiences of like intimacy and i think mine is maybe a little bit outside of intimacy oh yeah you're not like look at me i'm baby nala and i'm just like okay great that's like a lot of us like that's cool let's all kick it I thought this whole time you were talking about intimacy. Oh, I'm, no, that's a no. Well, I'm ace, so that's a whole different bag of bones, if I'm, <laughs> if I'm being oh, fully honest. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm yeah. I'm mostly talking about I'm mostly talking about sex. Yeah, okay. And, that does, and what yeah. I'm talking about is <laughs> uh, my grandma said she's gonna listen to every episode of this podcast as it comes yes. out. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so tell your this grandma. Is what's your, an adult what's your grandma's podcast. name? What's your grandma's uh, name? Shout out your grandma. grandma? Yeah, shout out Roberta. Love okay, you. Roberta. 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 Roberta, the thing about the thing about <laughs> fucking couples is <laughs> it's not cute if the couples are like, we never done this oh, before okay. and they're all fucking weird about it. You're outnumbering me, Roberta. On that, on that Giovanni, I completely agree with you. And Roberta, if you if if you're a part of a couple and you haven't brought in a unicorn yet and you're yeah. planning on it. Just again, treat it as normal. Just act yeah. like you've been here before. It's okay if you haven't. It's not bad if it's your first oh. time. I'm happy to bring you in, Roberta. But just like, don't be weird about it, okay? I, we can yeah. fuck. Mm-hmm. I, I think in general, like, that's the thing I see. That's such a, it's a dynamic that happens all the time in different queer communities of like mm-hmm. the people who are old hat versus the people who are really excited and tend to, I think, once you've been in the community for a while, you can find that energy annoying because it's like, I just like thinking of what I do as normal now and it is normal to me. Yeah. And, yes. But I think we all yeah. go through that early excitement or a lot of us do. And I, I don't want to discourage it. I do think that the only energy that annoys me, though I try to remember not to let it annoy me because people are figuring themselves out. Mm hmm is like when people forget that experiences are just new to them and not new in general. I have no problem with people being excited about the stuff that's brand new to them. If a a new trans woman wants to come show me her spinny dress, I'm going to clap every time. Yes. Um, Mm -hmm. But it's, it's like the people who are new... And then think they're discovering things for the first time instead of remembering that they're part of a long tradition and that and that like they're situated in a very long context. Yeah, yes. I completely agree with all of that. I think, uh, yeah, I completely agree with all of that. I think that that is so true. And uh, it's something like you get to like being part of the community is so rad. So like yeah. hop on in uh, and celebrate it. I do love that it's like gone from like uh, Nala eyes, like Penn Station eyes, where it's like, what? You get off the bus and it's like, wow. Uh, but I do. Shout New out to York City. The yeah. Where could a young <laughs> prostitute get her start in this town? <laughs> oh, um, 20 points uh, for the poll. Very, very Shout good. out to Azzy's grandma for rolling with it. Um, I yeah, love you. Thank, thank you, Roberta. So sorry. Azzy thank loves you, Roberta. you so much. And Roberta, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to let you limit me. I've been through too much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, no, none of this is getting edited out. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. no. This is the podcast. Beautiful. Then I'll tell. I'll tell. Then I'll make sure everybody knows. Don't tell me if I'm your first black person. Don't tell me. Oh my god. Oh, that's, mm. Don't tell me. Okay. Don't tell me. Yeah. I, I could wanna, understand. I don't want to know that. I could understand bringing up if it's like, it's my first time hooking up with like a person of this or that genitalia because then it's like maybe maybe relevant mechanical information or they're asking for guidance or something right uh if they're not weird about it i yeah. can't imagine the relevance of bringing up that you're the first black person you slept right? with <laughs> yeah. it's like no you're a lion from africa we're not that <laughs> different <laughs> get over it <laughs> oh man or um oh boy yeah oh uh unsolicited free advice for the listeners there if you're hooking up with a trans woman for the first time mm -hmm. uh, especially a pre-op trans woman don't do what someone i hooked up with did and uh at some point halfway through the carousing look her in the eyes and ask so are you gonna fuck me now oh that's because, fun yeah here's the thing uh -huh. some of them might and they'll let you know if that's what they're into. Mm -hmm. And some mm -hmm. of them, that's the absolute worst thing you could say in that moment. Yeah. So yeah. just free advice. Um, that's good the, advice. To all the chasers out there, especially. Uh, Second yeah. shout out to my dad, who's probably listening to this episode with my grandma <laughs> right now. <laughs> What's yeah, your real dad shout out to Jason. Jason. That's, that's Jason. Yeah. What's up, Jason? Hey, Jason. What's up, Jason? <laughs> so Sketch Alley's empty, and someone has chased everybody out. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, we have to fast forward so fast. We have three minutes left. Okay, barely, any, barely anything <laughs> happened in this in this episode, to be honest. So, like, Britta goes into Abigail's dreams and kind of re revives Cheryl a little bit. Uh, we, yeah. we learn that Percival Pickens has mind control powers and that he's British. Uh, 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 he's uh, British. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Veronica, Veronica tries to go legit and then immediately quits. Uh, I don't know. Does anything you know else what's happen? Crazy is that he's actually not British. For all the jokes, he's not British <laughs> because someone straight up asked him if he was in England before this, and he said no. <laughs> that is true. That is that was the conversation. He was, he was all around. Yeah, he said he was everywhere, and that. And that day player said he was a, a ghost. Yeah, because people <laughs> lose their accents after being in areas for too long. Like I, I knew an like an Australian person who mm -hmm. lived in America and lost their accent because they were mm -hmm. living in America for so long. Percival Pickens has been in America for four hundred years, uh, and he is holding strong. But time works different in Rivervale, and also yeah. I think that varies person to person. My my grandma Meg. Hi Meg, if you're listening. Hi Meg. Thanks oh for my gosh, sticking another, with it thus far. Another Meg. Meg another um, Meg mentioned. Yeah, in another podcast. Meg mentioned. <laughs> uh, Meg. Meg is English, and she's lived in Texas since uh, the '80s, and she still has a British accent. Mm -hmm. The 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 thing linguistically, uh, if that's the right word, is is mm -hmm. supposed to be that uh, before twelve. Uh, yeah. your accent is like mm -hmm. still malleable solidified but, but after, oh, okay. after after 12 after 12 it's like that's pretty much what it's gonna be oh yeah. my gosh yeah it can like it can change a little bit or you can choose to affect yeah. it but yeah. after think, 12 naturally like it will stay pretty much stay whatever that regionalism is meg's americanized a little bit to the point to any american she does sound british but she says uh -huh. she has had sometimes when she's been back in the uk where people have asked her if she was American. I can see that. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Speaking sure. of asking people things. <laughs> oh, Giovanni, I have the same thing too. <laughs> oh, <yeah. Charm. laughs> uh, Giovanni, thanks for being such a trooper. We just have four final questions for you. Oh, yes. God. Ugh, fine. <laughs> We're going to need you on for another episode where we don't even pretend we're talking about Riverdale. I think okay. this, is, this is actually going to become a, a five questions. That, okay. No, you, I'll give you two. You get five, <laughs> but you don't have to answer them all. Okay, But fine. we do have to ask them. We yeah. do have to ask them. You can fine. abstain if you wish. Um, first of all, our first guest, Oscar Montoya, posed to us a question. Who ate the Sin Pie? And so we've got a Sin Pie Award. Who 
killed it. Who absolutely showed up, just knocked every scene out of the park and left with no crumbs. Keep in mind, it could be uh, an inanimate object if you want. It can be an animal. It could be anything. Pass. Okay. Great. Uh, no <laughs> winner for episode eight. Um, the second award is the Ross Bryant Notice Me Senpai Award. Did any of these characters, were any of them someone you wish would notice you? I'm leaving in this silence. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, this is part to, of the thoughts. Are, the thought is no, important. Like, all real. I assumed, I was like, I, I they'll cut out the silence. Um, nope. <laughs> uh, I can't think of a real or a joke one. Someone that would notice me? Yeah, who's hot, basically. In a you said the waitress, the supermodel in the waitress way. outfit. But I wasn't That's attracted to her. I was, oh, distra- she just, I was distracted by how distracted. she just was a the, supermodel. Wow, it didn't feel grounded. Um, mm, mm. I thought those little houses were cute. Yeah, I thought, <laughs> I thought that the that mumsy, <laughs> that mumsy was. Mm. <laughs> okay. was doing a good job. Honestly, that might be my answer to the Oz, to Oscar's question. Okay, um, yeah, she was a great like evil mumsy. dream mom. Yeah, and she was like allowed to be that big and weird. Yeah, whereas like the uh, whatever. Okay, third. Okay. Okay. Okay, All so right, technically, so through asking the second question, we got an answer to the first one and no answer to the second yeah, one. Yeah, that's correct. I'm um, just making sure the, I'm tracking them correctly. Oh, so next question. <laughs> <laughs> question three is, this is called the Britannia Award for the mm-hmm. moment that most made you go, what? Uh, <laughs> I mean... <laughs> <laughs> the moment that like the Riverdale name came up, like the title card came up, I was like, "What?" <laughs> I think I said uh-huh. it out loud, not because of the title card, but because I was like, "Oh my god, we're only like ninety <laughs> seconds in." Oh. Yes, <laughs> that's Perfect. an amazing Perfect. answer. <laughs> yeah, that's a fantastic answer. Okay, uh, next. <laughs> Uh, uh, now we have the Dan Lippert Prediction Award, and this is an award that's not really an award. It's just do you have a prediction for where the season's going? I also, I don't know why Dan Lippert got brought up earlier. Dan <laughs> Lippert got brought up, and then it was about like something very oh, queer, like something very the, specifically it, queer. And I didn't there's understand. a um, there's a scene in the episode he was on for where a woman who'd been a part of a lesbian relationship and a man who'd been a part of a gay relationship for many seasons were now dating and they were explaining to one of their ex-partners um we're both still very much bisexual and we're still Mm -hmm, proud to mm -hmm. be members of the queer community okay Mm -hmm. oh i like that yeah okay i like i had two i had two moments that i liked from being here (laughs) 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 Um, uh where i think that this is gonna go i think that the devil is gonna have a party Okay. okay. And everybody's invited. But oh, yeah. no, it's not a real party. What? It's a fucking it's a karaoke spell. Oh, oh no, it's a <laughs> devil it's a, karaoke it's spell. A karaoke, it's, it's a devil very kar- angel. It's a yeah. devil karaoke spell a la hocus pocus. <laughs> And everybody's going to be under his spell, and then everybody's magic, and then what? Vampires and fairies and cheerleader. What? I think that's... That's great. I thought you said you hadn't seen this show, Giovanni. (laughs) (laughs) And Uh, then it becomes River Gale, and they come (laughs) slamming together, but it's not a river anymore. It's it's an ocean. Oh, shit. It's Ocean Gale? Ocean Dale. It's Ocean Glen. <laughs> Ocean Glen. Okay, and, Giovanni. And Archie's, and Archie's hair is just a squid. <laughs> I can't have you keep going because you're going to reveal the whole season to our yeah. listeners. Wow, um, spoiler um, alert. But the Gio- squid is the British. <laughs> <laughs> the squid kills everybody. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. It's Watchmen, the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no no! It's it's watching the the graphic novel actually. Um, okay, Giovanni, last question. What? 
God. What gets the Giovanni Award for the thing you hated Fuck. most about this experience or episode? I'm, yeah. not, I'm not giving a fucking award. <laughs> <laughs> giving an award would fucking validate that I should have said yes to this and that it was worth my fucking time to watch an episode of this bullshit and I refuse. Great. Fantastic. Uh, well, well, does not that no- answer your second question? <laughs> I don't remember what the second question was. <laughs> uh, Giovanni, thank you so much for suffering through this with us then. Where can people find you? Um, you can find me on any social media platform at Giovanni, just my first name because I'm that special. Mm-hmm. Um, Ooh, and I just, yeah. I just wanted to say I deserved better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i agree um great azzy i hope you feel bad for what you've done to giovanni but in the meantime where can people find you <laughs> uh, you can find me on instagram at i need azriel a-z-r-a-e-l you can go follow the podcast at riverdale six pod um shout out my grandma love you <laughs> what up roberta Oh. What about you, Sarah? Oh, yeah, you can find me on Instagram <laughs> at Sarah Rose Kaplan, where I post about improv or music or improv workshops for this podcast or pictures of me hanging out with Roberta. Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. And I have Omar. You can find me at Omar Najam Film on Instagram. And uh, 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 yeah, I don't know. I don't really have, I mean, we didn't really talk about the fact that they found a body in the casino, so I wonder if no, we're going to go ahead and unpack that later in the future. We didn't really talk about anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, here's the thing. Listeners, if you jump into the next episode and you feel like you don't have enough context because we didn't cover enough in this episode, honestly, fuck you. What the fuck podcast Sorry do you that. think you're listening to? That's the whole point. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. It's been such a pleasure to moderate this podcast. Um, Please like and subscribe the name of our podcast, which I don't know. (laughs) Giovanni, do you want to give everyone our traditional sign-off? Fuck everybody. (laughs) You heard him, folks. You just said it. You just said that's what you said just a moment ago. I had to assume that's what it was. Um, uh, Our traditional traditional sign-off. River. <laughs> I'm so sad that the zoom filter cut out the last I'm sure beautiful note um, but that's correct that's 100% yep. correct that's and, what it is uh, viewers I'm sorry I yelled at you just now I really do love you and I, I, I hope that we can continue developing a really meaningful um, parasocial relationship but yes. uh, in the meantime River <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Giovanni. That's it. It's over. Oh, We're not recording anymore. That's it.